Hey guys, welcome to episode number 19 of the Smart Nutrition Made Simple podcast. I'm your host, Ben Brown. Today, I had the pleasure of interviewing Rich Jacobs. Rich Jacobs is a longtime buddy of mine who's been in the industry in terms of strength and conditioning, uh, stretch therapy, functional medicine, nutrition. He's been through all of it and has a very unique approach to how he helps his clients heal. Rich is a functional medicine practitioner who studied with the Kalish Institute for Functional Medicine. He's a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and is currently completing his master's degree in applied clinical nutrition. As a former collegiate strength coach with eight NCAA Division I championships, Rich specializes with athletes overcoming depression, insomnia, fat, and fatigue issues. His approach is evidence-based using functional lab work and investigating the root cause of the symptoms rather than just treating the symptoms. When not helping clients, Rich is working out, practicing what he preaches, and cooking for his wife and brand new baby daughter. This was a great episode to catch up with Rich, talk about his experience in the industry, again, working with everyone from from strength and conditioning, athletes, to physique competitors, and everyone in between, and how all of these symptoms display themselves at one time or another, and how he uses functional medicine to help people heal from the inside out. I know you guys are going to enjoy it, and so... Uh, we will jump right in. But before we do, if you've been listening and enjoying the Smart Nutrition Made Simple podcast, then do us a huge favor and subscribe to the podcast. And if you're listening on iTunes, please do us a favor and leave a five-star review. It's really going to be the best way to continue to support us and allow us to do what we love best, which is sharing the best quality fitness, nutrition, and supplement information out there. It's our way of of giving back and helping make smart nutrition simple again. With that said, we'll go ahead and jump into Rich Jacobs' interview. I hope you guys enjoy. Rich Jacobs, how are you, brother? Good, buddy. How you doing? I'm really good. I'm really good. What's going on in your world? I know you have a, a new little one at home. Yeah, personal life has been fun. Got a 13, actually 12-week-old officially today. And uh, she's finally sleeping a little bit. Wife is happier, so we're moving along. That's great. Congratulations. That's super exciting. Thank you. Thank you. It's, a, it's been a transition for sure. And, and I'm learning like everything else in life. Yeah, I can, you know, it's funny how life changes with your first child. I mean, of course it changes with every child, but just how, how drastically your priorities shift the second that baby is born. And, and you can't even, um, you know, you can't even synthesize it before. It's like, everyone's like, are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? You have no idea what you're getting ready for. And then all of a sudden the baby comes out and you're like, everything else ceases to exist and and your priorities completely change in one instant. It's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. For me, it took about a month and a half until I realized I had a kid. And uh, (laughs) up until probably just a few weeks ago that I actually really start to love the kid. I know it sounds horrible, but you know me, I'm pretty raw. Uh, it's yeah. just, yeah, it, it, I don't know how, how else to explain it other than it's, it's been an experience and I don't know if I want to do it again. Um, <laughs> but, um, I, I love uh, my little girl right now and that, that we'll, we'll go with that. That's awesome, brother. I can appreciate, <laughs> I can appreciate the brutal honesty there. And you know what? That first six months is a grind. So hang tight. Hang tight, buddy. Thank but, you. You know, so let's get into into what you do and, and how you do what you do. So you're a functional medicine practitioner. Rich, for those that aren't familiar with that terminology, what does that mean? You know, ultimately, I'm getting to the root cause. Um, I'm looking at the root cause of GILF, uh, gut issues, insomnia, libido, fat and fatigue issues. Usually, I'm focusing with bodybuilders and athletes because that's my background, which I'm sure you'll get to. Um but really I just want to find out why those issues are occurring rather than looking at symptoms and eliminating just the symptoms. I want to find out what's causing them. And I'll use functional lab work and intake forms to really figure out, you know, where, where that source is coming from. Okay. So, so you meet with, so you meet with clients either like one-on-one or virtually, correct? Yeah. I prefer virtual because I want to be traveling the world while I'm still helping people. But yeah, I've got, I've got a location in Phoenix. And if you're not in Phoenix, uh, we work uh, one-on-one virtually. Cool. So, okay. So, so you have, um, 
athletes, you have kind of weekend warriors, you have competitors, uh, like physique competitors that you work with. And, and so you work with these clients to overcome sort of these, uh, these symptoms that they've been dealing with gut symptoms, energy, insomnia, um, fat and fatigue type symptoms, right? That whole GILF setup. And so what does a typical process look like? Or, or how do they, um, how do they find you in order to start to work with you? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's a very specific niche and really no one out there is working with that niche only. The way they find me is online through content, uh, through networking. I've partnered up with a lot of the local bodybuilding gyms, coaches and trainers. Uh, I have a booth in, uh, at bodybuilding shows and I sponsor yeah. bodybuilding shows and pretty much be there and make sure those athletes know that there's somebody like me out there in case they need me so that they're not going to four or five different doctors before they find me, which is usually what is happening right now. Okay, so that's awesome. So what is it that makes you want to work with these types of clients? Uh, you know you know this, but the, the listeners probably don't. I was a strength coach, strength and conditioning for about 15 years. And half of that time I was at the college level, University of Florida, Michigan State, Xavier, you may have heard of all of them. Um, I really like the athletic uh, population and clientele. They know that I know the language. They know that I know what they're trying to achieve. And I'm not telling them that they have to stop doing what they're doing. Let's just figure out what's wrong so you can keep doing what you're passionate about. So how did you, so having a background in strength and conditioning, like walk us through what made you want to make the transition? Cause it seems like, it seems like an unconventional route going from, a, a, you know, especially some of these really renowned programs being a high level strength and conditioning coach to wanting to work with, for lack of a better term, sick people. So what was the, what was the path that drew you towards that? Yeah. You know, the, the path kind of found me, um, it's a personal story, I guess. I'll, I'll just continue to be raw with you. Please. Uh, moved here from L.A. for a girl. It was a horrible relationship. Uh, ended up having to start my business over again. I ended up doing a physique show myself. Uh, got pneumonia. Everything happened all at the same time. Um, and guess what? I felt like crap. Yeah. Um, I had gut, insomnia, libido, fat, and fatigue issues. And... Uh, I think it held me back from personal relationships. It obviously ended my girlfriend relationship. And I was just kind of lost for a while trying to figure out, you know, what happened? What is going on with my body? I'm 35 years old. I was really just a very healthy person, very healthy individual. And now I can't get healthy again. Uh, I would go to doctors like everyone else. And they gave me Viagra and Ambien and other stuff where I'm like, I just don't think I need this. It takes mm -hmm. care of the symptom, but it doesn't actually take care of the problem. And then I found functional medicine and I worked with a mentor through functional diagnostic nutrition, went through that program. We found the root cause of my issues. And after about a year, it took a while. Well, what, um, were the, what were the root causes? Oh, my root causes. I had stage three adrenal dysfunction. Uh, so I wasn't, I didn't have high testosterone. I wasn't producing DHEA. Cortisol was through the roof and then bottomed out. So that was the cause of all those issues. I had digestive dysfunction. I picked up a couple of bad bacteria because of a breakdown in my adrenal function. And just the whole cascade mm -hmm. fell apart. And modern medicine with, with pharmaceuticals couldn't put it back together. So I actually had to figure out how to reestablish those feedback loops, correct what was the issues in the gut, go on a different kind of a nutrition program because my typical diet wasn't even helping me out and really heal from the inside out. And once I found that to be very effective, I'm like, man, this goes above and beyond anything I ever learned in strength and conditioning. And I worked with a lot of athletes who would even have a hard time getting stronger, reducing body fat, or even getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Had I known what I knew about functional medicine and getting to the root cause, adrenal issues, hormone issues, I might have been able to help them be, become even greater than they were. And so I went back to school for functional medicine, the Kalish Institute, and then functional diagnostic nutrition, and basically learned how to apply that knowledge to athletes and bodybuilders to recover quickly 
and actually just not mask over symptoms. That's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that story because, you know, more often than not, that's certainly something that we've all dealt with, dealt with to some degree. And, and listeners kind of know I have somewhat of a similar story, but I suffered with some, um, you know, gut bacteria issues and, and digestive issues for years and years. And that kind of was the impetus for me getting into health and fitness and wanting to take everything that I had learned along the way and, and pass it on and be able to help more people with that, with that info. So I can definitely appreciate, you know, appreciate your story there. So now that, so you've taken everything you've learned and now you're working with clients kind of one-on-one -on -one to address these types of symptoms. So how is it that these clients that come to work with you how do they identify with these symptoms? I mean, what's the typical process um, for them to go from starting to experience the symptoms? Why do they experience the symptoms? And, and then um, how do you guys address these things? Yeah, the, the why can come from a couple of different areas. Uh, emotional is a big one. Uh, dietary is another one. And then overtraining for this population, uh, hard dieting which I'm not against if you're doing a show, but sometimes there's better ways to do it. And eventually that, that does stress the a neuroendocrine system, adrenal and thyroid system that basically will then break down everything else. And usually, um, usually they have sleep issues first and then some fatigue issues, then libido issues, and it kind of just will cascade down until they have you know, the big five um, I don't know if I, I answered the question. Yeah, no, you definitely <laughs> did. So I, I'm just wrapping my head around because seemingly these are the epitome of what, you know, a lot of people, what of course you and I don't, but what a lot of people would envision as really healthy individuals, like really big, muscular, lean people, females competing in physique events, like every woman, not every woman, but women strive to get to the body composition goals that a lot of these women compete at. But what you're saying is that it is the process that they're going through to create these physiques that are potentially debilitating them uh, along the way. Is that yeah, fair? A lot, a lot of them, yes. Not for all of them, but for, for a large handful of girls out there, we're talking female, um, going that low fat, dehydrating, all those things put together is kind of like that perfect storm. And some of them can get through it just fine. And some of them can do it just fine for three shows. And then after that third show, they, they bottom, they, just, they crash. Uh, and I get a lot of um, competitors who are like that, where they've done a great, couple of great shows, they wanted to go pro, and then they crash. And they don't know what happened. Doing the diets they did before doesn't work. Doing supplementation they did before doesn't and, work. And, and give us an example of what the typical diet would look like for a female who's trying to get as lean as possible in sort of the, the traditional ways or, or if you, will. you mean the old school ways? The old space, <laughs> yes the old school ways yeah old school ways is usually high protein uh in that last month depending on the coach low fat low carb uh, sometimes no carb, no fat at the very end. So you're just talking like you hear the stories of tilapia and asparagus. And that basically will, will, you know, the steroid hormones, the main ones, are produced from cholesterol, saturated fat. And if you're not getting that, which most of them aren't at the end, you're just crushing that hormonal system, which will then cascade down. And it's really unfortunate. I mean, I guess it does work. It gets you really lean one time, yeah. um, and then, you know, bouncing back is usually a challenge. So I imagine the same, the same could apply because it, ultimately it's extreme caloric restriction. And so I imagine the same could and does apply to the general population. And if we're talking about females, especially females that are consistently dieting, they're consistently dieting and they'll do, you know, a six week uber restrictive diet and they'll lose a bunch of weight and then they'll bounce back. 
and then yeah. you know time of year again <laughs> and then they'll do it again extreme dieting and bounce back but unfortunately it's something that's extremely common in our society is for not just females but you know males as well to undergo these these insanely restrictive periods of dieting and so what what does that do to the body and how does that correlate to some of the the functional medicine things that you would assess yeah you know we just we can't seem to get out of our own way um i don't know i don't know why uh it's got to be so challenging and when eating became so scientific um well i, I guess i can tell you the, the introduction of processed foods has really mucked things up yeah. um and really messes with hormone imbalance and specifically what you're talking about is eventually leads to a Krebs cycle dysfunction. For those listeners who don't know what that is, it's basically taking fat, carbs, and protein, metabolizing them into the system to produce energy. And that energy defined as ATP, for the 1% of your listeners who know chemistry, um, know that ATP is the foundation of every metabolic process in the body. And if you're not, if you don't have healthy mitochondria, which is where the system occurs, you're gonna feel like crap. You're not gonna lose weight. You're not gonna have a good libido. So then you go get bioidentical hormones, which is basically the you know, same thing as the doctor giving me Viagra. Like it'll take care of the symptom, but you're not taking care of the problem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, cool. So, so, when, so then you get these uh, clients with these symptoms. They have low energy, low libido, fatigue, um, gut dysfunction, how do you identify the root cause? Like, how do you identify yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Um, you know, ultimately it's going to come down to some lab work and I do check cortisol and DHEA through salivary testing. Uh, the big lab that I love to use is organic acid testing. I'm looking at fat metabolism, carb metabolism, detoxification, neurotransmitter balance, uh, mitochondrial function, uh, and then I get a quick window into gut bacteria. And then to go even deeper, I do look at stool. Well, not me personally, but we do a stool lab. Uh, and I'm looking for gut pathogens like bacterial overgrowth, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We can go deeper with the placebo breath test. Mm -hmm. um, H. pylori, parasites, things that shouldn't be there that unfortunately Western medicine isn't really addressing um, or they'll attack it with antibiotics and then they don't follow it up with anything to rebuild the gut. I know I'm going a little off topic, but basically I use those three or four main labs. I use those intake forms and I put it together so I get clinical correlation between symptoms and labs, meaning I don't want to just treat, I don't know if I'm not supposed to say treat, I don't know if I just want to look at the lab and take care of what's on the lab or just look at symptoms and take care of symptoms. I got to put them together so the client understands how they clinically correlate and do we have symptoms that match up to lab results? Mm -hmm. And then we address that. And so how do you address the, okay, so what are the common imbalances? Uh, what are the common uh, things that you're seeing in these tests from an adrenal digestive uh, uh, detoxification pathway standpoint, like what are the common things that jump out? And then how would you address these from a nutrition, lifestyle, supplementation, exercise standpoint? Yeah, the, the common things that I'm, I'm seeing now are adrenal dysfunction, where I think a lot of the public thinks that they, when they have adrenal issues, they have high cortisol. And really, that's not the issue. If you had high cortisol, you feel on top of the world, and like you can handle everything. It's usually the cortisol is already going up, and now we're, we're dipping down too low, and now it doesn't respond to anything. So really low cortisol, low DHEA. So we want to make sure that we address that. And I'll get to how I do that. Uh, the other one with, with hard weight loss people, it's usually fat and carb metabolism, not functioning properly, which you know, drips down into mitochondrial function, not working properly. Um, I don't always see issues in the gut, but there's usually a gut imbalance because people usually come to me with bloating issues or gas issues or all the above issues from the gut that we don't have to talk about on, you know, on camera. Um, and a lot of times it is gut dysbiosis, meaning there's, a, there's an imbalance. And so how do I address that? 
uh, there's always going to be a combination of uh, diet, some kind of a rest protocol, uh, stress reduction, uh, exercise management, and supplements. So all five of those pillars are things that I use to implement, maybe not in any particular order. It just depends on the individual, but supplements are always going to play a part only because you really need those supplements to help uh, the feedback systems, feedback loops, bug killing, uh, cortisol restoration. You just you need that stuff to help bring it all back up and working again. I use them therapeutically. It's not a forever thing. Um, you know, since I'm on supplements, I do use their amino acids for a lot of people with mitochondrial dysfunction mm -hmm. because it does have the proper ratios of what they need through that Krebs cycle to restore function. Um, and I know you didn't ask me to do that. So, uh, but I do, use, I do use it often. I'll take, uh, the I'll take the plug for the complete essentials. Appreciate it. But yeah. pro proceed. Proceed. You're welcome. Um, I also do uh, a lot of nutrition management, meaning we might do an elimination diet if we're having a lot of allergy type issues. I might do a mitochondrial type diet where you're a little higher protein, higher fat to help boost mitochondrial function. But I have a bunch of different diet plans that I initially start with. Um, and then tweak depending on the individual. For working out, I never want to take the place of the personal trainer, performance coach, because that's just, that's not where I'm at anymore. That's what I used to do. And I speak the language, but I don't want to take over for that anymore. Um, but I will talk with the coach and client about, hey, maybe being in stage three adrenal dysfunction, we want to work on more of a strength management plan versus high intensity training right now to metabolically give your body a break, work on the nervous system a little bit and give the metabolic system a break while you're, you know, while you're healing might actually benefit to reduce inflammation and help bring some weight off. Uh, sleep management is always a, a challenge. I like to throw in meditation at some point, mm -hmm. always a challenge because a lot of the people I get are type A uh, executive type personalities and they just want to keep moving, moving, moving. So I got to get them feeling better before uh, I even encourage yoga or meditation. But a lot of times stress management down the road is going to help prevent getting you back into the state that you're in now, right? Ultimately, I'm fixing feedback loops and I only want to see you once a year for check-ins when you're done with me. I don't want you buying supplements for me forever. That's not the point of what uh, of working with me is. Yeah, so you're, you're ultimately while you're correcting the problem, you're also teaching them how to manage and, 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 and walk back, you know, reverse the, the, the things that they've put in place, the issues that, that have, have kind of built on each other throughout the process. But you're teaching them how to live a healthier lifestyle long term throughout, you know, the diet, rest, stress reduction, exercise guidelines, all of those kinds of things. Yeah, uh, that's ultimately what I'm doing because – Oh, man, it's just pointless to spend all that money working with me um, on supplements, on diet changes, getting organic food. If you're just going to go back uh, to the way it was, there's, I've never had a client that comes to me that says, I've had all these issues for one month. Can mm -hmm. you help me? <laughs> I mean, it, usually it's years uh, for competitors, it, it, months. You know, hey, I did a show back in January, tried to recover on my own. It's been about seven, eight months. And I'm actually getting worse. Can you help me? Well, right. Um, so this has occurred over a period of time and not just over a couple of weeks. So changes aren't going to happen overnight either. What are, so to be fair, while a lot of, let's say it's athletes or competitors may create these situations over a short amount of time, the vast majority of Americans, as an example, are suffering to some degree with too much stress, lack of sleep, poor food choices, lack of physical activity, low energy, low libido, all of these kinds of things, you know, yep. to, to varying degrees. So, so everyone could use your advice uh, in some shape or form for however it resonates with them. And for those people that are listening that may feel like their energy isn't where it's supposed to be, they know they could improve their nutrition or, or, or optimize their sleep a little more effectively, and really it's all of us, what are some tips that you would 
suggest? What are some guidelines that you would suggest? And let's just kind of walk through like the first being physical activity. What are ways that you think people should be exercising that's going to be conducive towards healing? Um, and obviously it's individualized, but not just healing, but just long-term health. Uh, get a good trainer. Uh, it's not as easy as going to the gym and doing cardio three to five days a week. In fact, that can cause more inflammation in an already inflamed state and do the opposite of what you want it to do. And so if you don't know how to work out or how to design a program on your own, I would really recommend getting a good trainer, coach, to, to get you going on that first. Uh, I believe strength training has some really good benefits in hormonal balance, in blood sugar management. Um, for females, they're thinking osteoporosis and joint management and strength. I think just... You know, we, we live in a society where we do a lot of nothing and our bodies are meant to be doing something yeah. and our bodies were meant to be lifting rocks and, and hunting and building and we're not doing any of that. So, which is fine. The alternative is get your butt to the gym and lift some weights and, and put some stress on your body. There's actually studies that show the more you do that, uh, the more productive you'll be in the rest of your life. Yeah. And Absolutely. And, and beyond the benefits of just strength training is just, just get moving, right? Just for, for those that may be too daunting to even get to the gym as a first step, but are currently sedentary, it's like just get moving, right? Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I should have said that. I mean, go, go hiking, go walking in a walking club, get out there, meet, form a community. I think community yeah. is so important. So important. And yeah. yeah, and in an age where everyone's like this the whole time on their phone, we're losing community. Uh, and it's really, I think, tearing apart. I think it's tearing us apart from the inside out in ways that maybe is just unbelievable because people don't believe that, that it actually exists. But if you think about what it used to be even 50 years, let's say 20 years ago, right? I graduated, I went through college without a cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, people got together more and were together more and talked more and just communicated in a different way. Um, so I would definitely find a way to do that within, you know, going back to working out, dog walking, hiking. Here in Arizona, we've got lots of trails that you can do, bike riding. There's really no excuse why you can't get out there and do something. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head too with establishing a community and using a community as a means to but, you know, possibly even use that community as a means to create accountability towards being more physically active, surround yourself with the type of people that are going to be more physically active and that are going to kind of hold you to task. Um, that's, totally. you know, that's a big one for, for stress reduction as well. So I can appreciate you sharing that. Talk to us about nutrition. What are, what are some of the nutritional beliefs that you share with your clients that allows them to improve their health long term? Oh, beliefs. Well, we live in an environment now where we're putting in a lot of inflammatory foods. Uh, the big ones being gluten, sugar, soy, corn, and dairy. And not that I'm against any of these, um, but it, it's the there's no rotation in what people are eating. They're eating the same 10 foods all the time. And eventually that's going to cause an allergy or inflammation in the body, which then causes the weight gain and gut issues and all the other things we already talked about. And so a lot of my teaching is really opening the door to new foods. Let's move the processed foods out of your diet. Yes, even cold cuts from the deli counter. Make your own darn chicken at home mm -hmm. um, or turkey or fish, whatever you're eating. And make sure we're rotating through it. Uh, a lot of clients still have a fear of fat. And we're still in a fearful of fat society. And I have to teach them to eat more fat and maybe less sugars and carbohydrates. But generally... People go gluten-free at some point working with me because it has been linked to over 50 autoimmune issues. And so I want to at least give your body that opportunity to heal. If you want to go back to it after three months, give it a shot. See what happens. If you're fine, great. But I want to put your body in the best situation to heal. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And you had talked about issues with fat and carb metabolism for people mm -hmm. what uh, what does that what does that look like and how can people identify and overcome those issues 
Well, identifying it on your own might, might be tough. Um, just because it's so hard to look in the mirror and be like, oh, I, I don't think my fat metabolism is working that well. Yeah, so this is um, <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> so that would be something that you would identify through the organic acids. Now. Yeah, I would do some lab work to, to figure out, is it a metabolism issue? And then based on what, you know, what the lab is showing, how to address that issue specifically. And um, you can always address it with nutrition first. In fact, I always encourage it. Because usually from the time you meet with me, it's about a month before I get all the lab results back from all the labs. So in that time, we've already made nutritional adjustments. And usually people are already starting to feel better and have already started to lose some weight just because we're changing nutrition. You know, we're, we're eliminating sugar and processed foods and, and showing you that real food is actually really good for you. Um, how, many, how many times if you have a client that's struggling with stubborn body fat and let's say they're storing more body fat around their midsection and seemingly whatever they do, they can't get rid of that, that quote unquote stubborn belly fat. Is this a situation where you would typically see that there are imbalances in their carbohydrate and fat metabolism? You know, I wish I could say it was that easy, but it's usually just half the time. 50% of the time is it, it's, oh yeah, there you go. You got an issue with that. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can say more frequently is that it's an adrenal issue yeah. um, because with decreased cortisol and DHEA, the body's more catabolic, meaning it's breaking down instead of building up. And so during that breakdown process, it's also more inflamed and it's really that inflammation and probably high stress, which is causing the adrenal issues, preventing that weight from actually coming off. So, and this is something I have, I have a lot of experience with previously because I have done diagnostic testing for myself and for clients in the past. And, and so I would like your feedback on this, but again, is seemingly everyone suffering with some degree of, of stress that's contributing towards adrenal fatigue that you know this this term adrenal fatigue so aside from testing isn't it fair to just assume that everyone is suffering from adrenal fatigue and and would you address it the same way if if someone came in and you just kind of make the assumption like I'm assuming there's going to be adrenal issues we would address it through supplementation nutrition or does does the um the nutrition and supplement recommendations change based on what level of adrenal fatigue they're, they're in. What does that look like? Yeah. So there's three big phases of adrenal dysfunction. One, one, two, and three. I know it's really complicated. So <laughs> uh, one would be hyperfunction where maybe we have to, we have to bring cortisol down a little bit. Uh, that person is going to come to me with uh, maybe palpitations or tightness in their chest. They're going to have sleep issues, um, maybe blood sugar management issues. And I would address that differently than a stage three person who has no energy when they wake up in the morning. They need three cups of coffee at morning and another three at noon. Um, they have sugar cravings and, and salt cravings. And, and even though they're so tired all the time, come nighttime, now they're up and they're wired. It's called tired and wired. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I would address that differently. Mm -hmm. And there's different kinds of adrenal uh, stage three adrenal dysfunction. It could be the tired and wired. It could be um, waking up in the middle of the night between one and three. So all of that has an impact. And the way I would address it is different. Now you are right where most people do have adrenal dysfunction um, when they come to me and I can assume that they do. And then we also have to work on perception of stress, meaning yeah, we're going to take care of nutrition. Yeah, we're going to restore feedback loops using uh, the various supplements and how we, we, how we apply them. But how do we prevent getting back here again? And it's really the perception of stress. Mm -hmm. All in all, what do we really have to stress about? I mean, holy crap, um, I didn't get your text message. And now it's going to ruin everything for the rest of the day. Um, well, okay, if you're going to react that way, right. you might as well just go outside in the jungle and get chased by a tiger because your adrenals and your hormone system is going to respond as if that were happening. So I think we really as a society need to work on perception of stress because that really is what impacts how your body will respond at the hormone level. 
So it probably doesn't help when we are getting pinged every 30 seconds from a text message or an Instagram like or a Facebook post and constantly checking our phone and, and checking our <laughs> phone. I imagine that contributes just a little bit towards our stress response or we'll wake up in the middle of the night and we check our emails and all of a sudden someone emailed us and we're thinking, oh my God, I need to respond to them right away. Oh my God, the, uh, the level of stress, it's no surprise that chronic fatigue has become the hot topic of conversation. I don't know if there's anything else we can throw at ourselves that can incur more stress. And really, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just uh, older than I, than I look, but at the end of the day, if you don't make your deadline at work, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, okay, you might lose your job. Is that the worst case scenario? Uh, it um, might be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> it, might, it might be. And, <laughs> and I'm not actually thinking about anything personally. I'm just thinking of clients in general. Yep. You know, why are we worrying about this stuff? It's so minimal in the, in the end. Yeah. So with that said, what are a few techniques that you have your clients implement to help them take down to help them take down their daily stress load. Uh, some of the relaxation, you had mentioned meditation. Uh, how do you have them manage some of these daily stressors that they may currently perceive as being overly important? How do you t- help them reduce that? Uh, I'm, not gonna, you know, I'm not a master in that area. Um, it's more individual how I, how I would address that person. You know, more than meditation or or giving them a reality check into perception of stress. If they're really having an issue with that, I'm going to refer out. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I know that I can't handle everything. It's going to stress me out. Um, we'll, we'll talk to the, the whole meditation standpoint, because I think uh, intuitively when we, when we say meditation, a lot of people think a little more woo wooey, but uh, aren't there just very more simplistic ways to, to meditate that can immediately reduce stress hormones and, and kind of help with productivity and, 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 um, and those, those sorts of things throughout the yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, simple things like take five minutes, shut your door, turn the phone off, turn the light off and literally for five minutes, sit there and just breathe. Yeah. Um, don't think about the email you have to respond to. Don't think about anything going on at work or at home or with money, anything. And just really try to get yourself into a state of nothing uh, for five minutes. And if you can extend that out to seven minutes and then 10 minutes and uh, really try to build on that, just five minutes a day can actually be very helpful. You know, another, another one I know you've used is like the grateful log, mm-hmm. uh, keeping track of what you're grateful for, uh, during the day or at night when you have time for yourself and, and just being grateful has actually been proven to help stress levels and help rebalance the hormones. Yeah. Those are two really valuable ones that I personally implement that I've, I've used in the past with clients and, and that that's exactly what I meant when I was talking about meditation is, is it's almost just finding a quiet time. It doesn't mean you have to go somewhere mentally, but other than just trying to shut it off for a few minutes at a time and, and it becomes easier and easier and more beneficial as, as you progress. And then the grateful logs really valuable, valuable tool as well. Yeah. And I'm an introvert. So when I'm done at the end of the day, sometimes it's really hard to me to go home to a, a wife who's been dealing with the baby all day and the baby might be screaming Man, I just sit in my car for five minutes sometimes before I go in because <laughs> you need it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. That's, the, that's my opportunity to, to leave everything that's been kind of work-related, outside of home and family-related, and, and accomplish that, like send the last emails or texts and then try and shut it down, although I could be way better at this and I need to improve personally, but try and shut it down and leave all that stuff in the car, if you will, shut off the phone and then go in and try and be present with the family. And I think a lot more people. Could yeah. So that. huge. And uh, this might sound corny and might turn a couple of, of listeners off, but um, I love the secret. I absolutely love um, the methodology and the, just the theory behind uh, the secret. I listened to the audio book 
it's become my new religion. Sometimes you just need a new, or you need a, uh, just a kick in the butt. Like, mm-hmm. hey, just take a deep breath and see life as you want it to be. And it will be that way. Be more positive. Positive things will come to you. Yep. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I'm not familiar with the secret, but that's how I use the grateful log to keep me grounded and focused on what's important so that I keep coming back to it. And I'm constantly evaluating whether the things I'm doing are being congruent with who I am, with what my family needs me to be for them and, and with what I'm trying to, uh, with what I'm trying to uh, be of, of help with to the public. So that's good stuff. Uh, Rich, where can people find out more about you? You know, the, the best place would be myhealthdetective.com. It's my website. Um, it's like an open book, like I am talking with you. I've got everything on there from uh, pricing to how I work to where I work. So that, and I got a lot of information for free on there too. You do. You have a lot of really good articles and videos on all of the topics and all of the symptoms that we're talking about. But, you know, you do a really good job of breaking it down from, just as you've done as we've been talking, but breaking it down from these complex kind of biochemical uh, concepts into seemingly easy to understand, um, you know, nuggets of of wisdom. and, And so... Uh, that's that's really good stuff that I think people are really going to resonate with. I appreciate um, that. I I got nothing to prove. I I just want to help people out. Give give you hard information easy. Well, you know, obvi- that's that's very clear. And what I respect the most about you is the fact that you know we have similar journeys, but the fact that you're so you've been so rooted in so many different areas that pertain to health and fitness. And there's a lot of people in the industry that are just very myopic in terms of they only specialize in these certain types of nutrition, or they, they only specialize in this certain modality of exercise. And, and frankly, you, you know, experience speaks for itself and you've been in the industry for over 15 years now. Yeah. Right? Yep. And, and, you know, everything from strength coach to, to doing stretch therapy, to doing nutritional coaching, and now into functional diagnostic nutrition. And so that in and of itself is probably the most valuable tool in my mind that you have to offer to those people that, that need your assistance. And, and it is really a valuable one. And so for that, I, I want to say thank you. Um, I appreciate you and your time and certainly our friendship. And, um, you know, don't hesitate to let me know what I can do to support you moving forward. Cool. I really appreciate you having me on and kind of just open the doors to more education and then let people know that there's someone out there that can uh, help them out with these issues. And um, uh, like you said, I like to have a lot of tools in the toolbox because I don't think uh, one tool can do everything. Heck yeah, buddy. That's good stuff. Well, until next time. Uh, You have a great day. Enjoy your little baby and wife, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Ben. You too.